Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Vogel. I'm a pro uh, program manager on the Azure IoT Solutions team. And I'm Will Gaiman. I'm a program manager on the HoloLens and computer vision teams. And the purpose of our teams is really to help accelerate partner development across Azure, Azure IoT, and cognitive services. And so we're here to tell you a little bit about how we're combining our two worlds together and what that means for you guys as developers. As a little bit of a brief intro, I'm sure you're familiar with this talk track already, but uh, Microsoft has gone through a few phases lately. We started years ago with the cloud, just getting people to send storage and compute to other people's, uh, you know, other people's locations, other people's data centers, really helping people get onboarded to Azure. Um, eventually, we started realizing that Azure could actually be the place for all of these new connected devices, whether it's in industry and manufacturing, whether it's in a smart building, in retail and health, all these devices have a way to get to the cloud and start sending their data um, up to Azure so you could start deriving insights and intelligence from that. Um, now that we have more and more devices connected, we're noticing new uh, connectivity protocols as well as new ways of interacting with your devices, and so that's where the edge starts coming in. Uh, so if you take the example of a people counting device, you want to use the edge for something that would learn in the cloud, but then send the model down to your device so that way you could actually start analyzing that video locally instead of wasting all your time and all your bandwidth sending that uh, video stream to the cloud, as well as not having to worry about privacy, privacy and security with your uh, device data once it's sent to the cloud. Finally, we also now have artificial intelligence and mixed reality, and that's both an input into your cloud as ways to now understand your environment, as well as new canvases to create new experiences for your solution. And so the whole purpose of our presentation today is to really tell you about the opportunity we have to bring IoT and mixed reality together and how we're starting to empower those types of experiences. Uh, to ground us in some uh, common terminology, we just want to tell you a little bit about how we think of mixed reality as Microsoft. Uh, for us, mixed reality is a, a spectrum across what you might call augmented reality, where it's really a transparent uh, pane of glass over your physical environment, to virtual reality, where you're immersed in that experience and you're living in the digital world. Um, for Microsoft, we want to empower all ends of that spectrum through various devices, whether it's through HoloLens or through uh, head-mounted displays, through iPhones, Android, uh, tablets, and so on. So we're investing in a wide variety of ways to help accelerate your development um, across these experiences. Now, when you're starting to build out your solutions, it's important to also understand the real world in context of your solution. And that's where what we have as digital twins uh, fits in. So for us, a digital twin is a way to fuse your physical world with your digital world, with mixed reality then being that canvas. And so when we think about IoT and digital twins, we go across a few different domains. We call them things, insights, and actions, or systems, context, and processes. So what you have here is uh, IoT allows you to source data from each of those pillars. So with devices, we talk about different ways or different protocols of communicating with those devices. How do you send insights back to those devices? How do you do command and control? Uh, with spaces, it's all about understanding the context of the physical world. How do you start sourcing data from things like an AutoCAD diagram or a floor plan? And then associate that with all the devices that you already have in that space. Lastly are the people. How do you source information about the people in your environment? What's the information that you want to source? And how do you do that securely and privately so, so that way you're not invading anyone's privacy with what you're collecting? With digital twins, we allow you to model all of that together in terms of your spaces, devices, and people, and now start deriving insights from those intersections. Uh, Azure Digital Twins was a platform as a service offering that we uh, launched into public preview October of last year. And at its heart, it's a way to help you model your world, again, in terms of spaces, devices, people, but all with uh, your industry expertise. So while we started with examples on smart buildings, so for example, a, a connected office kind of uh, scenario, you might be working on a smart stadium or a smart uh, retail environment, a smart mall, a, a smart hospital. Um, we allow you to bring your domain expertise, your ontologies, and model that in terms of your digital twin. And then lastly, we also allow you to start accelerating your solutions and act on those insights faster um, now that you've modeled everything cleanly. And so with Digital Twins, we really concentrate on making sure that uh, we could allow you for multi-tenant experiences as well as nested tenant experiences uh, to make sure that you can now scale your solutions globally and across any number of domains. To give you something a little bit more concrete here, this is just a typical diagram you might find of a connected office solution. It's not prescriptive by any means, completely flexible. And so we always start with the spaces. So here you might be modeling your solution, uh, let's say, in terms of Microsoft's campuses around the world. 
Uh, in Puget Sound alone, we have 160 something buildings, and so each of those would be its own layer of your topology. Uh, within a building, you might have multiple floors, and then within those floors, you have multiple different types of areas or spaces. Uh, this is where you start getting into the interesting parts about an ontology. So for example, a conference room might be bookable, it might have resources like a Teams room or a projector, uh, whereas a focus room might not be bookable in exchange, and you might only be able to grab it ad hoc, and it might just have a small phone in the room. Um, again, this is where you start modeling other domains as well. So you could bring in your smart stadium and model bleachers and the stands and the field. Um, or in a smart hospital, you might have an operating room, a waiting room, and so on. Once you model your spaces, then you start adding in the devices and the sensors in context of those spaces. And so, for example, here, you might previously have a bunch of motion sensors sitting in one database, and then your space is sitting in another. With digital twins, we actually allow you to parent those devices to their specific spaces. And so if you wanted to find out if, uh, let's say, room 123 was occupied, now we give you the right APIs to go in and query for that room status based on the sensor values in that space, rather than you having to do all that custom logic to bring those together. Finally, we also have users and the people who actually go about those spaces, not only modeling location or other uh, information that you might want to see in your solution, but also uh, building things in a way that scales across your tenancy. So uh, we have a, a several role-based access control APIs that allow you to model who has access to what information. And so you might have someone who has full admin privileges to create your entire topology versus someone who might be a device installer who has very specific permissions to install a device in a given space in a given amount of time. Um, this is how we're starting to kind of bridge the gap between the physical world and the real world. And then we'll tell you a little bit more about how we're starting to light up other experiences with spatial anchors uh, built on these digital twin platforms. Yeah, so Matthew's been talking about this computing shift from the old way of somebody entering in data into a PC to this new world of all these IoT sensors that are streaming data to the cloud, which thanks to the digital twin service can be represented as the actual spaces and the things in those spaces that will stream up data about how they're being used, the health of those assets, and all that data is coming first into the cloud, which flips the world from the old uh, reactive way to now you can be proactive about the data. And we've noticed that this also requires a change in how we consume and interact with this data. And we've heard from partners that uh, the traditional method of a mission control style room of people looking at PC screens packed with data and these dashboards is overwhelming and complicated. And a lot of the benefits of digitizing your entire space to begin with isn't very useful if only being consumed by a limited few. And fortunately, with mobile devices and apps like Teams, we now have channels to be able to push that data out onto a mobile device and give alerts. So something went wrong, go investigate. But we think mixed reality is the way to complete the circle and be able to actually give anyone the ability to access that ubiquitous digital layer in their physical space. One of the key challenges in order to realize that vision is, of course, it starts first and foremost with knowing where are you. And you have to know your position and orientation in order to be able to pin digital information to the physical world. There are, of course, positioning systems today on your mobile phone, most notably the GPS. Uh, but for many of you know, uh, GPS accuracy is usually around seven meters on a mobile phone, and indoors and in urban environments, it can be much worse. And so the Spatial Anchors platform is trying to solve that location problem. It's trying to combine computer vision and spatial intelligence and give you a very precise location so that people can pin uh, digital content to a particular spot in a physical space. How does that actually work? So an anchor, for those of you familiar with uh, computer vision, SLAM, uh, will take a series of images from a device, which would be your iPhone or Android camera or HoloLens cam the HoloLens tracking system. It'll detect features in those images, de uh, determine the positions of those features using computer vision algorithm, combine it with the uh, IMU data, and will generate what we call an anchor, which you can think about as an XYZ coordinate in the world. That image on the right is actually a w uh, one of our office buildings in Redmond that has uh, four stories. Each of those uh, bright green and uh, orange dots are anchors that are placed throughout all four stories of the buildings. So you can create many, many of these anchors throughout space. And anchors live within a domain. We are not building a global world map, uh, which is a very difficult problem right now. We're actually creating the service so that individual uh, spaces and enterprises can build out a particular domain of anchors. And anyone that's part of that domain, which is secure to that enterprise, can create those anchors. And any other app from any other device can locate those uh, anchors. So those anchors persist over time and can be found by anyone. 
and the last important point, which I'll show, show why it's important later, is that behind the scenes, we're storing a graph of all these anchors together, so that once you find one anchor, you can find all the others. So we're going to show how this comes together in a demo. So the scenario we'll take you through here is based on an open source GitHub repo that we built uh, in partnership with uh, partner Internology. Um, and this mocks up the scenario where you're the facility manager for a couple brands of hotels. Those brands might have multiple hotels around the world. Each of those might have multiple buildings, multiple floors, and so on, kind of similar to that topology I showed you before. And in this case, you're actually trying to manage those devices and see what your real-time data is uh, in comparison to your occupancy. And so we'll show you a couple different ways that Spatial Anchors now lights up new experiences for you to actually navigate your digital twin and then also visualize data in context of that digital twin. So I'll jump over here. And so you might have seen me scanning the room before. And so here I see that I've placed a spatial anchor on the stage. Uh, these are two different brands that I have uh, in my hotel. And so if I dive into, let's say, the smart hotel brand, now I can see all the different building models of the buildings in my portfolio. Let's say I want to go even deeper. So let's select that first building. And so now we have multiple floors within that building. And you see that that spatial anchor starts pivoting with me as well. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Helps with Slack on this. Um, now I could dive into a specific floor, and those floors might be laid out you know, differently. Here we're just kind of templating the same diagram. Again, it's kind of statically in my space, but I can now move around depending on my perspective. Let's dive in here to that first room. And you'll see I have three different sensors in this room. I've laid out those uh, coordinates as spatial anchors themselves. And so now if I click into them, sorry, I might not be close enough. <laughs> You can see that now it'll actually start showing you some of that real-time data, which we're actually pulling from the MX chip, which I'll tell you about in a second. Whoops, looks like I lost it. Um, but here, if I now switch views, I'll jump into what we call the physical vi uh, visualizer. And so here, again, I've scanned my space before. Um, it's actually now relocating me in my space using those coordinate systems as well as the camera imagery that we had before. Again, remember that Will told you everything's maintained as a graph behind the scenes, and so we could actually find these different anchors from each other. And so now here, I've actually placed an anchor on top of my sensor. It's an MX chip with uh, various sensors on board. So there's uh, simulated occupancy, there's temperature, motion, and so on. And so here, we're just showing a few. Uh, you can see that this is just the current readings. I can come here and actually tap on this button that we've used to just simulate occupancy, and so that will round trip in a few seconds, although with Wi-Fi here, you never know. Um, and so that should kind of round trip in a little bit. Um, as that's loading, you'll also notice that I could pivot around and start seeing this anchor change with me. Uh, there, the occupancy finally changed. Um, and so for a facility manager, this is actually pretty interesting because now you can actually place your anchors on top of devices in your space. And if you're the repairman, you can actually go back and now uh, visualize all this device data in context of your field of view, whether your phone, tablet, or HoloLens. Um, in a case of a repair situation, you might also want to do remote assist or have historical information compared to real-time information on there. That's all powered by that digital twins backend, as well as uh, connected field service and remote assist that you can now bring in in the context of your app or your solution. So now we're going to jump back to the laptop for our last demo. We might have to you see all the losing baseball teams I root for. These New Yorkers. <laughs> um, thanks, Matthew. So he showed you the, the kind of base scenario of just being able to walk up to an asset or machine in the real world and see the digital uh, information coming from it. There's another element to that, which is you, uh, that point I mentioned about the graph, where if you find one of these anchors and the device can relocate itself, you can find any other anchor. And this lets you actually chain together a uh, very precise indoor navigation system uh, without any, any ex external infrastructure. Uh, th the way that this is a little demo we built in our office, where it's going to identify, first it's going to find the meeting couch. And then on the bottom, you can see it's, it's found 34 other anchors. And we dropped an anchor on every person's desk. And so you can imagine in an office type scenario, these are all interesting points of interest. And you can then see where everyone's desk is. And you don't have to use this as uh, you know, a hold your phone up, your arm gets tired uh, type navigation experience. You can just 
uh, still use it normally as you would, and then only hold it up when you really want to see a particular uh, piece of information. So you can imagine if a, if a technician is new to a space and they don't know it very well, they could get it directions to the asset they have to fix. Uh, someone in an office space could figure out what conference room or meeting uh, place they need to go to. You can imagine it's being used on the factory floor. Uh, so we think that there's some interesting uh, wayfinding type experiences that could be built by uh, developers on top of this. Digging in a little bit into just the architecture behind this, uh, it starts with the client, which can, as we mentioned, either be a mobile phone or HoloLens. And it'll make a request uh, to a service that just uses Azure Active Directory to get an authentication token uh, to use on the service. And then you specify uh, what space you're in in the digital twin. Uh, so it might be, hey, we're in uh, the Washington State Conference Center right now. And the digital twin service will look up all of the anchor IDs corresponding to that space. And then the mobile app or the client uh, will then find those anchors. Uh, once the anchor is found, it will uh, ask uh, Cosmos DB to pull the most recent digital information uh, from the digital twin. Any new information that gets streamed to the digital twin, like the sensor data, uh, gets pushed via the event hub in an Azure function into that database so that you're always getting the most up-to-date information. And we are now seeking to make this real. And so the purpose of that GitHub repo I mentioned was to help accelerate our partner development on these things like digital twins and spatial anchor service. Uh, CBRE is one of our first partners that went through the full journey of digital twins with us uh, and now is starting to flight spatial anchors and other mixed reality services. CBRE is a facility manager. They have over 6 billion square feet of real estate under management today. Uh, their app is in production called CBRE Host, where it's a smart office experience for the occupants in a space. And so they help you as an occupant navigate your, your way around the environment. They actually do real-time wayfinding uh, from floor to floor. Um, they also help you find rooms that fit your needs in real time. And so it's not just based on uh, real-time physical data uh, from motion sensors to see which one is occupied or not. It's also activity data. So they know that, let's say you want to find a brainstorming room, you'll probably need something bigger, something that's OK being a little louder, something with a whiteboard, maybe a, a Surface Hub so you could start collaborating together. Versus if you want to find a coffee chat and just have a one-on-one -on -one with someone, you're looking for a smaller environment, something that's you know, more intimate, something where you can have a quieter conversation. Um, all of that's now modeled behind the scenes with digital twins and then comes to life in their experience uh, using those APIs. They're taking that one step further and now going out to their techs in the field uh, by using these kinds of scenarios with spatial anchors to light up all this contextually relevant information, not just with the repair scenarios that we we're talking about, but also now to help empower occupants. So for example, let's say there's a spill somewhere or the wires were broken. As an occupant, I could take a picture of that, and that would actually place an anchor for me in the system, and it'll track work orders through connected field service to make sure that's tracked through completion. Uh, we see a variety of different opportunities with this, and we're ex actually excited to see not only Smart Office, but a wide variety of other domains as well. Um, so that's everything we wanted to show. Um, you know, please get started with those various services. We have spatial anchors. We have digital twins. Uh, we have those GitHub repos that I mentioned that will help accelerate your development. Um, you know, we'll be around if you have any questions. And um, I think that's everything. Thank you. Thank you.